हेलो गाइस वेलकम बैक सो टुडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट एग्रोस जेल इलेक्ट्रोफोरेसिस सो विदाउट एनी डिले लेट स्टार्ट दी वीडियो सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी शुड नो दैट व्हाट इज इलेक्ट्रोफोरेसिस सो इफ यू क्लियरली सी दैट दिस इलेक्ट्रोफोरेसिस इट इज मेड अप ऑफ द टू वर्ड्स दैट इज इलेक्ट्रो एंड फोरेसिस सो इलेक्ट्रो मीन्स इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड एंड फोरेसिस मीन्स मूवमेंट so what it says electrophoresis if we combine these two words so what it ultimately says that electrophoresis is the movement of any particle under the electric field means when a particle it move on the application of or under the influence of electric field in that case we can say that it is electrophoresis movement under electric field now what is agros gel electrophoresis so here we are doing the electrophoresis but in you can say but with or in agros gel so this agros gel electrophoresis it is a technique which is used for separating or you can say analyzing the dna or protein samples means we can separate out the dna molecules by using agros gel electrophoresis so this agros this agros gel it contains some microscopic pores which act as the molecular sieve and these pores or you can say these pores these ultimately separate the molecules on the basis of their size and shape so in the agros gel electrophoresis we separate the dna or protein molecules on the basis of their shape and size now let's discuss the principle of agros gel electrophoresis so this agros gel electrophoresis it separate the dna which is preloaded into the wells and once the current is applied so this dna molecule as we know it is these dna molecule these are negatively charged so they will move toward the positively charged electrode and this you can say this all the dna fragments they have uniform mass to charge ratio so now ultimately the dna molecule they are separated only on the basis of size means they will move under the electric field but all the dna molecules they have negative charge so they will move toward the positive charged electrode and as agros they are moving through the agros pores so they will separate it out on the basis of their shape and size so this is the principle of agros electrophoresis that it separate the molecule on the basis of their size now the components of this agros gel electrophoresis first is the gel casting tray this tray is used for making the agros gel then comb this comb is used for making the well in this agros gel as shown in the figure this comb is placed on to this melted agros gel and once the gel has been solidified this comb has been removed and there will be the creation of wells on which the dna sample has been loaded next component is the electrophoresis tank it is a you can say apparatus in which the electrophoresis buffer has been filled and this gel has been placed in order to carry out the electrophoresis the next component is electric unit which is used to provide the electric current because we are uh, we are doing the electrophoresis which require electric current so electric unit is there then uv trans illuminator it is an instrument which you can say which is used to see the finally separated dna molecule because we cannot see the dna molecule with naked eyes so we make the use of an instrument which is known as uv trans illuminator it generate or it emit uv lights and the uv light now passes through this dna molecule and this dna molecule they contain a dye that is ethidium bromide so due to this dye now the dna molecule they can be seen as orange color so this instrument that is uv trans illuminator it helps to see the dna or you can say separated dna fragments and beside these other requirements are agros because we are doing the agros the electrophoresis so agros uh, definitely agros will be needed and this agros it is generally isolated from seaweed that is 
zelidium and now this agrose has a property that on heating it is changed or you can say it is changed to solution form or liquid form and on cooling or once the temperature has lowered down it can change into semi solid or gel form so it is used to make the agrose gel the next requirement is the electrophoresis buffer so generally we use the tris acetate ED, edta buffer that is tae buffer this buffer is generally used because it provide the ph to the dna sample and ultimately this edta that is ethylene diamine tetraestic acid it acts as a chelating agent it also deactivate the enzymes because it bind the metal ions which are required by the enzymes so once the enzymes has been deactivated so there is no risk of the degradation of the dna fragment during the process so that's why we use tris acetate edta buffer the next requirement of this uh, agrose electrophoresis definitely the dna fragments we need the dna samples which we want to separate out the loading buffer because the dna samples these are very light in weight so they generally do not settle down into the wells so to make them little bit heavier we use some loading buffer which is generally glycerol so due to the density of glycerol now the dna sample they become heavier and they can easily settle down into the dna wells which were created in the agrose gel the next is bromophenol blue which act as a tracking dye or loading dye because we cannot see the dna molecule with naked eyes so we add bromophenol blue this dye has smallest size in the experiment so it will move further from the dna fragment means it has smaller size even from dna it is smaller than dna so during electrophoresis it will move ahead of the dna fragment and it is blue in color so the position of this blue dye it indicate that the dna molecules are behind this dye so it you can say it generally make the track of the dna fragments we can detect the track of dna fragment by analyzing the blue color of these dye so that's why known as the tracking dye the next component is the ethidium bromide which is used to stain the nucleic acid because once the electrophoresis has been done the dna has been separated now in order to see that separated dna fragments we make the use of ethidium bromide it is a dye which intercalated between the bases of the nucleic acids and it has a property that it can absorb the ultraviolet light and emit the radiation in the visible light so due to this property it gives the orange color to the dna band so that we can clearly see the orange color bands so these are the requirements for carry out the electrophoresis that is agrose gel electrophoresis now the procedure of electrophoresis so first is the the first step is you can say gel casting for this we generally heat or you can say we generally uh, you can say we generally take agrose and heat it in order to make in the in the liquid state now this agrose gel is poured into the gel casting tray and as you clearly see this comb has been inserted in this liquid gel once solidified now this comb has been removed and there will be creation of wells which are used for the loading of dna sample once the gel has been created and wells are there so the next step is the loading of dna samples so for this we take the dna samples and this bromophenol blue dye has been added during the loading so that we can track the path of the dna fragment so that's why it appear in blue color due to the bromophenol blue which act as the uh, tracking dye or loading dye so by this we load the dna fragment into the different wells we generally load different dna fragment into the different wells now the electric field has been applied across this gel means now this gel has been placed into the electrophoresis tank which contain the tae buffer after placing this gel into the electrophoresis tank now the electric field is applied by the electric unit so as we know the dna is negatively charged so it will move toward the positively charged electrode and during its movement it 
will suffer the saving action of agarose gel pores means the agarose gel it contain pores so during the movement the dna fragment has to move through these pores so due to sieving action they move according to their size and the smaller fragment it move ahead as compared to longer fragment means smaller the fragment longer it will move or further it will move from the well and heavier fragment or larger fragment they remain behind the smaller fragment because due to the sieving action of this agarose gel these small fragments they just move within the pores very easily while the larger fragment they generally entrap between these pores and they take some time to move through these pores now as these are separated according to their size so next step is just you can say it is the visualization of these fragments so as i told during the requirement that we add ethidium bromide which is used to see the dna fragment after their separation so now the gel is placed in this uv illuminator trans illuminator and it will emit or produce you can say uv light which is passed through these bands and these bands they contain the ethidium bromide which ultimately absorb the uv light and emit in the visible range so that the dna fragments are now visible as orange color bands which you can see on your screen so now the question arises how we can detect the size of dna by using agarose electrophoresis so for this we generally run dna ladder what is dna ladder dna ladder it consists that dna fragment of various size like here in the example the dna ladder consists of the dna size of 100 200 300 kb and to so on to 900 kb now as during the electrophoresis dna fragment move according to their size so we match the position of dna fragment with the dna ladder and when the fragment same the position of two fragments are same so we can say that the size of two fragments are also same like here in this case the three dna samples are run with the dna ladder so from the position we can clearly see that this two fragment they correspond to the position of 700 kb fragment of dna ladder so these two dna fragments are also of 700 kb and the third fragment it stops at the position which is correspond to the 500 kb dna fragment of dna ladder so this fragment is also of 500 kb in length so by this way or by comparing the position of dna fragments with that of the dna ladder we can clearly we can clear, uh, clearly uh, deduce the or detect the size of dna fragments so this all was about the agarose gel electrophoresis which generally used to separate the dna on the basis of their size and by making the use of dna ladder we can also analyze the or we can also determine the size of dna fragments so that's all for today guys see you in the next video thank you very much